Philip Green, multi-billionaire retailer, owns as much as 10% of the British high street. I don't know, there are varying figures. I sort of read, I don't know, 8, 9, 10% UK high street. And in Oxford Circus, at the heart of London's shopping district, green stores are slap bang in the centre. We've got tens of thousands of people. You can see, this is the junction. This is principally our flagship site. Um, this is number one London as a location. Fortunately, we own this whole island site. And then here we have 100,000 square feet of selling area, both top shop and top man. When we bought this business eight years ago, this store was achieving sales of about 65 million. This year, we should go through 150 million. I think sort of in terms of the business we're in, um, you know, it's something we aspire to do in other major cities. In such a prime position, window displays are key. The reaction from the window, we would monitor. The conversation we have the most are, you know, I hate the writing. So, uh, you know, I, I sort of on our line, you know, I'm sort of thinking maybe slightly more commercially. Um, than my, my we young... Have, we, my have young we have constant battle. We have, constant we have, battles. We have debate. <laughs> what am I going to say about that? It's too bland. No. No top shop. No. Pass. White on white. The sign. Ah, oh, no. Yeah, 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 but you can't see it. <laughs> Each week, Green visits every one of his buying departments. Morning. Today, at British Home Stores, he is making one of his regular inspection visits. What, whatever happened with that, um, you know, the 15 for 15 pounds? Yeah, good. Essentials is trading really well. So what does that look like now? This is just some of the concepts that we've got here. So I'm just trying to understand, sorry. Mm -hmm. So that's all, that's 50 for 15 quid. Yeah, yeah. But now that's from 12 pounds. I don't think that's strong. Okay. I, think, I think the message where it was before, where it was all one price, mm -hmm. whether it's 12, I think the one price message I thought was strong. I think from doesn't mean anything to me. We didn't used to have that. No, this used to be, there used to be 15 items that were all 15 pound. And I like that as a clean message. It's like here, you know, if you said from 50 quid, mm -hmm. but it turns out it's 275, mm -hmm. but it's, 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 it's got to have credibility. Yeah, no, it can't be misleading. Most people actually don't know what I do every day. They think they do. Demonstrate they have no idea that I'm going from here to a dress meeting, to a knitwear meeting this afternoon, to a coat meeting for next season, then to a gift meeting. You know, you've seen I'm in the engine room of my business. That's the part that I love, actually helping it develop, evolve, build things. That's the fun. They give me a room like this. They fill it up with toys. Traditionally, we would buy between one and 300,000. Right? And it really is on gut feel. So we line them up on a shelf. Say, OK, so which one do you like? Now, would you like to go pick and say, so I'm going to buy one, two, 300,000? And is it gut feel? Yeah. Hello? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> good. <Hello>. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that could be fun. Oh, that could be fun. Now, tell you what we need of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Talk to the supplier. Mm -hmm. We need a big one. Love the concept, but is the item good enough? What do we, what do we think of that? I think we love it. The item? Yeah. But that? We need to get the Q-tar factor that's yeah, missing yeah. at the moment. So it's, so it's now got to become broader appeal, cuter. We need to develop the item. And the di that's the difference between buying 10,000 and 200,000. Funny. Have a nice day. <laughs> it's cool, isn't it? <laughs> Could drive you mad after a while. It <laughs> doesn't matter. Huh? Does it? BHS, along with seven of the UK's best known high street fashion brands, is managed by Green's company, the Arcadia Group. At their 2010 results day, Green boasts soaring profits despite the recession. So let me just tell you how we've managed to do. Um, the group operating profits last year were 279.6 million, up 10.4% on last year from 250. And I'm still energised to make this work. 
and uh, I worked till about 2.30 last night. I got up at quarter seven and I'm still going and I'm going to have dinner in New York tonight. So if you could work that out, <laughs> um, that's a long day. Green has a huge passion for what he does and this is the force behind his success. What drives him? Well, it's not money because he's got enough of that. Um, he likes winning. You know, he's the sort of person, if, he's, if you're playing Monopoly with him, if you get the good properties, he will literally throw the board up in the air. And I, funny enough, I'm exactly the same. Um, I, that's what it's about with him. You know, he likes to do things well, um, loves to win, um, and he's got incredible energy. Everybody wants to win. Whether you're playing, you know, when I used to play table tennis with my kids, I don't give them a chance. Right? We play to win. Right? We play tennis or whatever we're doing, you want to win. Why, you know, why do you want to do something not to win? not to be successful. I think you drive yourself, and I think probably it's actually a lot tougher. You know, when you actually got to a certain place, to manage that is probably even harder. I always learnt in life that you learn more from, from other people, and you always look for someone who's gonna be smart in your life. And uh, that's kind of what happened with Philip. You know, he became like an unofficial advisor to me over the years. You can phone him three or four or five in the morning, which I frequently do. And he's always there at the end of a call. They say, hello, you know, he's like, oh, are you there? You know, so you get used to it, you figure it out. It's part of your life, it's, you know, you like doing it, you're engaged in it, you love it, you make it work. Those that know Green well see a man who prioritises selling and making profits more than anything else. I don't know any other retailer who will, who will literally go to one of his stalls in Oxford Street in London, say, at one in the morning after dinner because he's had a thought about the window dressing. And he'll go and look at it with his wife often or whoever, confirm his suspicion about the window dressing and get it changed at one in the morning. Unless you give your all, if I wake up one morning and I don't want to do it, then I'll be the end. This is not a half-hearted job. This is full-on roller coaster, you know, of different emotions on a daily basis, hourly basis. It's, it's a tough business. Coming up, can that desire to win keep Green afloat in the shark pool of US retailing? Why would I think about failure? I don't do can't do. I do can do. But somehow or other, I'm going to get it done and whatever it takes to walk across that, you know, I'm going to try and get it done. It's Fashion Week in London. The biannual showcase of British talent is now a business worth more than $600 million to the UK economy. Hi there. And King of Retail, Philip Green, is here for Topshop's Catwalk Collection. We've got the, the, you know, the world coming to London. London's iconic in terms of fashion. I think we're the only retailer that shows. I think it's really powerful. Green hopes that this collection will help make 2011 a breakthrough year for Topshop America. And the attendance of American Vogue editor Anna Wintour certainly helps boost visibility. Beat you. you know, all of us love coming to London. He's been great for British fashion, great, great for British Fashion Week, and uh, they're lucky to have him. Anna and Vogue are you know, an important voice in America. Uh, you'd rather have them on side than offside. Um, and I think she'd always be honest. These are some of the designs that will be for sale in American stores. I think we've got a good chance based on you know, a few things I've seen this week. I think it's our strongest collection. I think it's got clear direction, sexy, and I liked it. I'm confident that with Philip's expertise behind it, that he will conquer the United States the way that he's conquered Britain. While he's just starting out transatlantically, he's slowly gaining recognition and making some waves across the pond. At the annual National Retail Federation convention in New York, Philip Green has been honored with the International Retailer of the Year Award. Oh, oh. I think you should take it over. Oi, oi, oi. I think that receiving an award from the United States is extremely important 
if we're going to be successful. He is accompanied by his wife and children, who are integral to the family business. My family, my team, um, you know, I, I, I saw this is a family, a big family. It's a family-owned business, which is what it is. He loves his job, he loves his family. I started with him, I've been with him for 25 years, so we came from nothing and from very humble beginnings, and he's still a very humble man today. And I love that about him, because he is a very humble man. Yes, he has a big roar, and yes, he has a big personality, but you know, without that, there's no Philip Green. Moments before the award, Green gathers himself to speak before a crowd of 3,000 people. I haven't done this many people ever before. Luckily, I'm last. <laughs> so I can cheat. <laughs> I see what they do, then I can figure it out. I'd like to thank the National Retail Federation for this honour. It was always my aim to retail in the United States. Some 18 months ago, that came true, opening our first store in New York, Broadway. And probably the best bit of that was we were outside the day before the opening and our entire UK team were here and I said, is everything fine? They said, there's only one problem, Philip, we haven't got a permit to open. He's one of the most remarkable worldwide stories in retail. If you go to England, you can't walk down any high street without seeing one or two or three of his stores. That's not easy to do. <laughs> Anyone who's you know, been in retail knows that's an incredible feat. So on an international level, he's truly been exceptional. Yeah, it's a long journey for one store. It's a long way. Back to one store, start all over again. While this recognition could embolden Sir Philip to continue his American expansion, great challenges lie ahead. A successful British export, Simon Cowell can attest. There's lots of people who think it's easy to crack America. It's not. It's competitive. I mean, the reasons the Americans do so well, they protect their own quite rightly. Uh, and if you're going to go in there, you've got to be really well prepared. And you've got to know the market. The answer is nothing's easy. I'm a considered investor. Uh, you know, we're offered things every day of the week that we say no to. We probably say no to 20 times more than we say yes to. We'll go carefully. My thought process all my business career has been, if I'm wrong, what happens? Not if I'm right. We're not going to get suckered into some stupid deal in a street we've never heard of. There's work to do, but I think we've got a shot. The future may be uncertain, but the best in business are confident he will succeed. Sir Philip is, is known in the US as, a, uh, as an innovator. He's a guy who breaks the rules. He's a guy that doesn't just follow a typical format, but he's always trying to look up, ask the questions uh, instead of uh, why, why not? Why can't I come to America? The branding of Topshop and all their other companies globally is something that most of us stand in awe of. They are on top of every aspect of their business which is kind of hard to believe when you have that large a business privately owned. So it's extraordinary. I couldn't be more proud. He's worked hard for it. He loves what he does. He enjoys it. He's good at it. He has meat behind him. <laughs> he loves Americans. He loves the American culture. He likes the fact that people aren't upset if you're successful. So I always thought he would do really well over there. Um, but, you know, also, look, this is why he's made so much money. Philip Green's winning attitude has earned him billions, and his company has been successful in more than 37 countries worldwide. Can he push that final frontier? I don't do can't do. I do can do. And somehow or other, I'm going to get it done. For more on Revealed, go to our website.